the Fed's report about the failure of Silicon Valley Bank is out. So let's take a brief review of what has happened with SVB according to the Federal Reserve because their report that was done by Fed Vice Chair for Supervision Michael Barr has been released and this is exactly what he said. So he said, quote, SVB failed because of a textbook case of mismanagement by the bank. Its senior leadership failed to manage basic interest rate and liquidity risk. Its board of directors failed to oversee senior leadership and and hold them accountable. So that was the end of his quote there. So what I will say is that the risk manager at the bank was much more concerned about the risk of people not being treated equitably, about the LGBTQ agenda not being shoved down our throats quite enough. This is my opinion, not his, um, and less concerned about the things that they were supposed to be managing, like interest rate risk and liquidity for the bank. So let's break this down a little bit and go back in history. During COVID, it wasn't really COVID that caused all of the problems. It was our response to COVID. So the world pretty much just shut down and locked everybody up in their houses, causing supply chain issues since nobody was at work. The companies couldn't get the the, uh, supplies that they needed to make the goods that they sell to customers. On top of that, you had a government who pumped over $5 trillion dollars into the economy through quote unquote COVID relief. So the first round coming under the Trump administration right at the end of of his uh, time as, as president, which was pretty well needed. And then you had that followed by a much larger injection after the economy was flipped back on and already starting to recover by the Biden administration. And then on top of that, Um, because we were seeing the effects of all of this money being pumped into the economy. Inflation was out of control. So they legislated inflation to come down with the um, Inflation Reduction Act that did no such thing. It only enabled more spending, more money to come into an already cash flush economy. Well, the Fed enabled that spending, printing money like it was going out of style. The Fed, to combat inflation, began this cycle of raising rates very aggressively over the last years. Uh, Businesses, uh, big banks, couldn't take in all of the deposits for all of the money that had been injected into the economy because of certain banking uh, regulations, but smaller regional banks could. Because of lax oversight, they put all of that money that you heard the Fed say into deposits um, well over, they collected all of this money that um, their depositors were putting in well over the $250,000 FDIC limit. So all that excess money ended up in some of the smaller regional banks that didn't quite have the stress test to reveal whether or not and when they were in trouble. They had to do something with the money because that's what banks do. They l- they lend out money or they invest in things to generate revenue um, so that they can pay the depositors interest for leaving their money there. So because of all of the liquidity, companies didn't really um, need loans because there was so much free money out there, um, the banks bought up long bonds to try to generate revenue because of this very, very low interest rate environment that we were in. So when these rates went up dramatically over the last year, the bank's bond portfolios got hammered because that's what happens. That is interest rate risk. When interest rates go up, the value of bonds go down and the value of longer bonds go down further. So SVB had a $21 billion bond portfolio that was yielding about 1.8% when the current 10-year treasury was then, then meaning this year, yielding about 3.9%. That's not a good position for banks to be in when you're bringing in, you know, when you're earning 1.8, but then you're uh, paying almost 4% to your depositors. It cre- creates a very bad position for a bank. So liquidity began to dry up and their depositors, uh, talking about Silicon Valley now, were mostly high-tech startups and they were using their deposits to run their businesses and all of the free money that was coming in had stopped coming in. 
While SVB announced that they had to sell a chunk of these depressed um, securities at a loss to get the liquidity that their depositors were demanding and that they would sell $2.25 billion in new shares. SBB would have been okay if they would have been able to hold those bonds to maturity, but they couldn't because the depositors were demanding their money. This was a a digital run on the bank. Um, This caused the FDIC to step in and prevent runs on other regional banks, which, by the way, had the same issues. So the fallout from first Silvergate, then Silicon Valley, then Signature weren't the only banks in such shape. There were 500 more regional banks in the same shape. So now over the weekend, the next shoe dropped, First Republic. Now three of the four largest ever U.S. bank failures have occurred in the last two months. So it's big banks to the rescue. Um, Over the weekend, we hear that JP Morgan now owns First Republic and 10% of all U.S. deposits are now in JP Morgan Bank. 